Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us again this week and I'll turn it right over to my amazing co-host Deborah. Wow, so she said amazing today, people. She's in a good mood. If you were watching and seeing her, you would see she is like on fire. I got on the on the Zoom today with her and I'm like, ooh, look at your energy. So awesome. Well, welcome and thank you again for watching and listening to our show. And I am really excited today because it is something that is very near and dear to my heart. And Caroline, I work with you quite a bit and we've got these new projects that popped up this year. And I think it comes down to a lot of different things, but it's a perfect conversation to talk about in relationship to our visitor today, our speaker, because this woman has incredible work ethic. And I know that we're going to talk about her, her life and she's going to talk about, you know, a little bit of advantage that she felt that she got from being an immigrant and how she applied that. And we were just talking about how our grandmothers are very similar. And one of the things I think that we talk about, and the other thing we were talking about is like, you know, age, right? And like, you know, age is just a number, but there's many conversations that happen when you are a certain age that goes, man, when I was younger, you know, my work ethic comes from, and right. And we talk about, oh, you know, these kids, these days, and, you know, our parents probably talked about, oh, these kids, these days. And, you know, because every generation has a different advantage and disadvantage really. Right. Like, I think, you know, they always talk about um, the third generation in a large, uh, successful, you know, corporation. So there's the father that started it, right? And then there was the son that took it over and he saw his, you know, his father work super hard. And then sometimes when he gets that third generation, the company falls apart because there's a break in that lineage of working hard and knowing what it was like to grit and grind and build it. And gosh knows, the three of us know what it's like to grind and build it. But I don't know, when you think about work ethic and how that's changed, right? even we are still the same. I mean, I think I'm still the same. You know, my grandmother's like, girl, like non-negotiable. <laughs> my grandmother was non-negotiable, right? It's like, if there was something meant to be done, you know, you didn't dare say I was tired or I don't want to, or, and we talk about that generationally. And so, I mean, this is one of the hardest working women I've ever met. What do you think when it comes to work ethic? Like what, you know, how's that land for you? Well, <clears throat> I always had a really strong work ethic. And now that I'm thinking about it, my grandma was the sweetest, most <laughs> gentle thing on her, but she was also an immigrant. So yay, I'm part of the group now. Uh, <laughs> but she did um, immigrate from Puerto Rico. And, um, but I think that my work ethic comes from the fact that I was raised with a single mother and I've seen mm -hmm. her do everything like she raised me as of nine months old so i've never seen you know um tasks being divided and for me when i was younger if i wanted spending money i had to go get it <laughs> that simple um when i look at my kids now they have to find my wallet um but you know back then i remember i think i started babysitting i was like nine or ten uh when i was 13 i started working i was working in a big corner store that had 12 gas pumps and everything. I'm looking at my 12 year old that will turn 13 in a few months right now. And I'm like, thank God she's not doing that. <laughs> she would be so not ready. So I think it was different generation and everything, but definitely our work ethic was different. And I think back then it was just like, first of all, it was easier to get a job. Second of all, we were not as sheltered, you know, as we are sheltering our kids now. And maybe it's, a, you know, a part of it is us now wanting to give everything we did not have. So I don't know. Um, and then at the same time, I'm trying to instill in my kids work ethic, but it's hard because they have everything they need and they want. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, divided between both, but I do trust that uh, when you, when you are raised with certain values, when you're on your own, you will eventually, you know, apply those values. So I do think that my kids seeing me work and being an entrepreneur and, and, you know, getting up in the morning without a boss telling me, get up and do your stuff. I think it will instill something in them, but, um, I'm going to introduce our new speak, our new speak. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a, it's a coffee table subject, right? Because it can go back and forth, back and forth, depending on how old you are, depending whether you have children, 
right? Depending on whether you have children, uh, depending on what kind of person that you are, whether that served you or didn't serve you, right? A lot of people rebelled against being told what to do. And so very interesting. I, I don't, I think it's an ongoing life. And as things get, get what people think is easier, right? Like technology, technology, right? Do we get lazier? Ooh, ooh, I don't know. I think I'm gonna leave that one for Angela. <laughs> Yeah, so let's welcome Angela Martini, who's an amazing, powerful woman who actually really started to have to look after herself very young. So I will let her tell her story, but welcome Angela to the show and tell us a little bit about you. Well, welcome ladies. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here with the two of you. And I know as we got on this morning, I could just feel something magical is going to happen today. I could feel your energy and I'm so excited to be in on this podcast and share a little bit about my story. And yeah, so I, we talked, we touched on a bunch of different things. I am an immigrant to Canada. I came to Canada in my, in my very uh, early teens, actually at 18 years of age. And uh, I was born in Austria in a small town in the mountains, very remote place, small little place. When I grew up, there was about 5,000 people and there was definitely more cows than people. And, uh, you know, rugged, lots of snow, you know, we, I wasn't coddled, just, you know, talking about work ethic, Deborah. Um, I grew up with a very strong uh, grandmother. And I think also very strong, come from a strong stock of women, because when I think about, you know, World War II and, you know, where my grandmother and what they went through, you know, they were on their own, right? And my, um, my grandfather on my, on my dad's side, uh, he died very young. So my grandmother was on her own. And we grew up in a multi-generational house. We had a little bit of livestock. We had some, you know, we had um, land around our house and our home has been in our family for 150 years. So there was always something to do. And um, whether it's good, bad or otherwise, I really, really never really was allowed to relax much, right? Because stuff was, was, was to be done. And I was taught to see the work, right? I was taught to see it. My grandma says, always said, you got to see the work, you know, don't, don't let people, don't make people tell you what to do, see it, go find it, get it done. And we did not rest until the work was done. And, um, you know, I mean, there's always two sides to every story, right? And sometimes I think about it is it, what, uh, it's hard for me to relax at times because that's in me, right? That what else can I do? What else needs to be done? It needs to be done, right? But it served me very, very well. And, um, I'm thankful for that upbringing and I'm thankful for seeing the work right in so many parts of my life that has really driven me to be successful because I was able to go above and beyond maybe what most people are willing to do. So mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. And it's interesting, right? Because when people think about work life balance, oh my gosh, they think of this. They think of this, but here it is. And I remember someone very clearly telling me that that's an icon in this industry who's actually part of the book. And she said, when you're building, it's not like this. Your personal life and your business, it's not like this. When you're building, when you've got, when you're inspired, when there's something that you're going to create, it's going to be like this. It could be like this in one day, but if you are on purpose, if you are on vision and you have a picture of something that you want to accomplish within an amount of time, this is very rare. This beautiful circle of the yellow part is my personal life, the blue part's my work, the red's my family, <laughs> you know, the, the green's my exercise. That, that, that is not the case. A balanced life can be very different. You can get self satisfaction in small moments and times in all areas, right? So. And it it's a matter of seasons, right? There are always seasons in life. And that is one of the, I think the most powerful things I ever heard, even in relationships, you know, there's seasons. I had a, a mentor early on in, in my network marketing career who was um, a pastor in his past life, but then he realized, you know, he had to be very religious to be a pastor. So it didn't quite fit into this. <laughs> brilliant mentor and a brilliant coach. And he said to me, you know, sometimes it's winter and sometimes it's winter for a long time. Isn't this where we are in this in this time in in history right now? We're we're right. a little bit right. So we have certainly yeah. seen the balance go off. But like you said, you know, when you're inspired in 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 one part of your life, the energy will flow in that direction, right? And that it, there's always a cost and a payoff to everything that um, in everything that we do. One hundred percent. Yeah. Well, there's definitely one huge thing that I already got from you right now, or from your grandma. C 
see the work. <laughs> I yeah. will actually teach my kids that see the work because, um, you know, I think this is so it's strong because it also teaches you to be proactive and not just to wait for stuff to get at you. You know, you mm -hmm. need to look at what is there to do. And I think it's, it's probably, uh, you know, a huge thing that made you an entrepreneur. It's to always seek, okay, what can I do there? What can I do there? What can I do there? And not wait for opportunity to come knock at your door. Um, mm -hmm. So how, how did you start in business, Angela? So um, I started in business in different ways. So I, I, I also worked when I was uh, 13, 14, 15, right? Just back then, it, that's the way it was, right? Nobody had to be age to get a job. So that was fairly easy. At 15, I had a, um, um, I actually finished high school very early because in Europe, you can go through different levels. So I finished high school at, uh, at 15. I had a full-time job at 15, actually. And my first job was in a shoe store. And so hence the love for shoes. So if you ever walked into my shoe closet, you know, I, I'll come by it honestly. And that was my first, um, you know, first thing. And then from there, I always had little things on the go that I like to do. I like to sell things and make things and create things things. And um, uh, eventually down the road, uh, once I came to Canada, the very first thing that I did is I, I came to this land. I thought, okay, so what am I going to do here? Right. The cool thing was that back then, and as, a, as an immigrant back then, really, you had to come here, you were on your own, I had no financial support from the government, nothing whatsoever. Within two weeks, I had my social security card, and it was let's go get this thing done, right? So, um, and even though I, my English you know, was decent. I thought when I came here, I was really quite shocked how little I did understand because I grew up on an old Oxford British English. And when I came to Canada, I was like, whoa, <laughs> I don't know if I, you know, first of all, it was so quick and I, I didn't understand the colloquial term. So it took me some time. So I started watching TV and uh, lo and behold, this was a big phenomena back there in, in the, in the early eighties, but fitness is where I had my start. So I watched a lady named Charlene Prickett on television do her fitness. And I thought, that's what I'm going to do. And so I just watched her practiced and started looking, you know, in the phone book, uh, there are fitness studios like this in Calgary. And I found one. I had to get on two buses and I don't know, walk so far. But I went to the studio and I went in there. And I remember that the, the manager's name was Shelly. And she said, okay, well, you can come and try out a class and check this out. So I went in. And after class, she said to me, you know what? I think you could be good at this. You, you know, you, you know how to move. You're kind of, you know, physically active. And so she said, I'll give you two weeks. Come back in two weeks make a tape and then we'll see what you can do. And that's how, how I first started in, in business because being a fitness instructor, I had to fill my own classes. The more people I could bring in, the more I got paid. And so that was the first way I could find out that on my own, I could create more income than just an hourly income. So those were the very beginnings. Okay. That's so amazing. Uh, Deb, sorry, you're muted. There you go. So yeah, I take, I take instructions well. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, I mean, I think we can both easily see because we're in the same, you know, sector as you for, for one of our businesses in relationship to that internal self-drive. I know one of your passions is working with women. And I know that we talked about like that kind of when women are hitting that 40 place and onward and really reinventing themselves. Like, wh what is it about that sector? What is it about that group of people that you want to kind of get in and and help shift. I think uh, for me, just uh, in my fifties now, um, the last couple of years, right? Mm -hmm. That the, that come with that, the the actually unexpected feelings, mm -hmm. emotions that come with all, right? Um, and and this opportunity for rebirth uh, really got me motivated and excited because it it seemed it it after you know all the things that you go through it kind of felt like the world is now my oyster again, right? And I. The one of the most exciting things that I love about the business that we're in is, and you guys probably echo this and have seen this, when you bring a woman or you bring somebody to this an event for the first time and they experience, especially an event that's not local, okay? And they experience okay. that hope and that possibility and see themselves or see other women you know, achieve that never they thought but never thought was possible for them when that washes over them and they get that feeling you know and, and you know they can never unsee unfeel or unhear what they just experienced 
I live for that. Like I just live for that. I live for that moment to see that woman, you know, see possibilities for herself. Because when a woman, when a woman changes and rises and you know puts that that both feet in the ground or cast that rock, it creates a ripple effect, right? Women cause a ripple effect in the families, you know, in their relationships, in their friendship groups. And to be walking alongside someone on that journey is, for me, is one of the most exciting things about what we do. Absolutely. Well, I think that it's pretty clear that helping other people is, you know, is runs through your veins, right? And the interesting thing that I think that even all of us, why we're kind of here and why, you know, you know, chickens fly with chickens or eagles fly with eagles, whatever you want to say, is that I think people can, I mean, Angela, you're very inspirational and I can see how people would borrow your energy. Like I could see how you just standing beside you being in a room, just visually hearing that, that until someone has that in their cell, in their soul faith, how someone could have it in you because you've done everything that someone would want to do for themselves. I mean, it just kind of oozes out of your, oozes out of your skin. What made you decide to do the, to do the book? You know, we're, we're here, we're talking a little bit about a, a book. I know that you've talked about having one, you're writing one yourself. You just, you know, we all just collaborated on this great book, 20 Powerful Women in Network Marketing, Tell All. Tell All. I think that's incredible. <laughs> what, uh, what was that about for you? Um, I think the, I think the courage to write my story, right. And, um, and I think that's maybe, um, you know, this, I know is only the beginning, right. Of what, what can get created and get that, getting those, getting those books into the right people's hands is going to be empowering for a lot of, a lot of women. And, um, so I really applaud you for having the courage to step into that this year. For me, it was the courage to tell my story, the courage to actually, um, step back a little bit into the failures and what it has taken to get to this place because um that's one thing I've, i i know for me sometimes it's a, ling a limiting piece because i was raised so you know from strong women and and you know don't show your emotions and all those types of things sometimes um you know i ra have raced in my life this has been a real realization even writing this writing this chapter was racing from one thing to the next without even ever acknowledging how far i've come and i think that that book will be such an enriching experience for women when they read it to see that all of us in the book have come from you know adversity and through this adversity and through all those things that pain that we've been through that's what allowed us to go and rise and build on that right that that we're not born into this we are bred into this and leaders are leaders are you know forged <laughs> right so they're necessarily born but they are forged into this and, and into where you know finally we are allowed or able to go so I think that was really the deciding factor for me of course you've it's, uh, attracted an incredible uh, bunch of women so part of it is 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 really uh, an enriching experience for me and I so look forward to reading all the stories myself there I've I've read them <laughs> because I have the privilege since um since I'm putting it together uh, it's absolutely amazing, honestly. And yours was really one for me that uh, really stood out. Um, you know, all of the stories are beautiful and they're all very different. Um, but I really liked how you became a leader. And it's funny, you just said that you're not born a leader. And we see that in some quotes, like you're born a leader. And I'm sorry, but for me, this is the biggest misconception because being a leader is a title you need to earn. <laughs> you know, you need to really... Uh, set the ground, do what there is to do, and, and you become a leader. It doesn't necessarily go with a rank or a title. It goes with your actions, with how you're perceived and what you're doing for others. Um, and I really like how you earn your titles because you, you worked hard at it. And honestly, I'm going to say it again, but my hat to you, uh, immigrating at 18 years old in a different country, uh, it's huge and it does take a lot of power. Um, the, the next thing I wanted to bring you to is that I know you also really, really strive to empower women in your daily life. So tell us a bit about, you know, what's your, how do you do that? What's your mission? How, what's your, your MO for empowering women on a daily basis? Well, I think so. it's really, really, uh, 
um, owning our um, owning our energy all the time, right? That's the, the key piece, owning our energy and really becoming leaders in our household, right? Because um, I've come from a traditional upbringing still, right? Where I come from, you're a very traditional upbringing, very strict dad, all that sort of stuff. Um, but at the same time, you know, powerful women. And for me, it is really um, stepping into leadership, but not forgetting the power of your femininity. For me, that's really a powerful piece. And not that I'm a feminist <laughs> in, in, in that regard, but, you know, I think that, you know, we have, we really have everything inside of us as women. And I want to make sure that women um, step into the leadership without forgetting who they are, right? I can be um, a really good wife at home and I can, I actually enjoy cleaning the house and cooking and all those different things because I grew up this way, but at the same time I can step into my office and I can be, I can be the boss mom, right? I can be the boss, uh, lady boss that I want to be. So really owning all the pieces of, of being female. I think that's a, that's empowering, not limiting yourself by age or, you know, where you come from, uh, you know, reinvention can happen at any time in our life. And it's just depends. It just is a matter of stepping into it, right? One step at a time. Rome wasn't built in one day. And realizing, I, I, I said this before, building on the little micro wins that you have along the way. You know, we kind of want to, you know, always strive for these big accomplishments. They're great. But I know along the way, I've noticed when I hit those milestones, yeah, I, I was like proud of myself for about five minutes. But then I thought to myself, my you know, like all that work that was done, right? I remember, you know, being in a rank advancement goal and, and out here, my husband had a computer. I'm like, come on, you got to put this in, right? Because we're trying to hit the, and those fun things and the team being on and everybody working together, that was the, that was the juice, right? It wasn't like that big thing that happened when I got the rank and I got whatever came with that. It was those other little pieces along the way. So stacking the wins, I want to empower people to stack, women to stack the wins and realize, that all the things they've done already is, is, is a stepping stone and it's a door, another door opens, another door opens. It's just, that's the piece that I love more than anything. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> so Caroline, you know what? I'm gonna interject here um, because I think that's a brilliant question that you asked her and you know what? I'm gonna throw it in your hat. I'm gonna throw it in your hat because you know I know the, I know the camera you, I know the background you, I know the parent you. And um, I think it's very interesting, Angela, and I think it's a, a, common, um, a common thing for women to, I don't know how often we stop. You know, I think that whole smell the roses thing was really for us because I think it's, it's inbred, particularly when you start being, you know, whether it's a parent of a company, a parent of children, um, when you start creating and there's other people very, involved or their success is based on your ability like that's a like 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 you say Carolyn that's a that's a forged experience right and we kind of go through like this with it so I'm going to throw the same question at you Caroline on your daily basis how do you empower well I call my friends no <laughs> how do I empower women well first of all you know for me it's um getting a little personal here but I was raised with uh, you know, don't brag, be proud, keep, keep your head up, uh, don't share any issues, <laughs> uh, you know, secret stays at home, and, and when you're out there, you need to show your, your strong front, so I was really raised this way, and it, it, it served for the time that, you know, we had to go through everything, I was raised only with my mom and my sister, but that, when I started to get out and started to wanting to get bigger and create more and empower, I was always fighting the idea of like, don't brag, keep yourself, you know, on the same level as everyone. And I would downplay myself quite often because I did not have always the right connections. And when you don't have the right circle around you, quite often, you know how they say you're the average of the five people you're with. If you don't choose your five people right, uh, well, you're going to be the average of that. And sometimes it's almost like you're making yourself the average of that. And for me, I, I ling lingered in there quite often. Um, but I would say since I joined network marketing, it really, really showed me how, you know, because it's a complete different industry where people are actually lifting each other up instead of pulling each other down to, you know, stay on my level because I don't want you to go too high. We're really lifting each other up. And for me, that was my first experience 
uh, with other women having this relationship. And I'm so grateful for that because it also taught me that, you know, don't downplay myself um, and, and share everything that is good for me, successful for me, uh, empowering for me. So I'm really on a daily basis. I try to do that, whether it's like little texts to friends, uh, just being like, hey, girl, you're amazing. Uh, you're wonderful. You're beautiful. Just saying hi to people. I used to be like, good morning. Now I'm like, hey, beautiful. Hey, gorgeous. And, you mm -hmm. know, I, I put compliments that I think of when I, I, I reach out to people. But I find that all of these little things, first of all, for me, it's really liberating because I've always thought that, but I was always careful not to, you know, throw it out there. And for people reading it, it's also so empowering. And actually, Deborah, you're you were a great mentor in that area because you taught me how to, you know, um, share praise, share uh, good tips, share, share, share. And it the mentality that I had to change is there's enough for everyone. So when you share yeah. success and when you share great tips and tell all and all of that it's going to come back. It's going to come back and it's going to make you feel more empowered and everything. So empowering others also empowers you. Uh, so that's really on a daily basis. That's what I do. It's just little things. I can't name huge things of like, I do that because it's in my little, uh, my little daily habits. Um, but I would say launching this book, 20 powerful women in network marketing for me is probably one of the things that I'll be the most proud of ever because it's the first but also because it's so you know when you think about it we're 20 women coming from different companies with zero competitive competition or a competitive mind we're all like when we all met together we were all there to raise each other up and push each other up and congratulate each other that's pretty rare. If you look in any business, you know, especially women, we tend to be catty sometimes, and that's just a reality. I'm not going to pretend it doesn't exist. But, you know, bringing that together to empower other women, and it's going to be empowering for men as well, because in the end, we're all humans. But um, for me, if I look at a huge product project that I did, was that, and that we did, that we all did. But yes, and what about you, Deborah? I know how you empower people because you empower me on a daily basis. Um, and I know that you believe a lot in people sometimes when they don't believe in themselves. So, but very fast. What, what's your... your... Yeah. Well, when I think, thank you. And so when I think about, you know, Angela, what you said and Caroline, what you said, it was like, I think of a big part of it was learning that I deserved to fill my own bucket, right? And so I was raised very much like you guys, single mom. It was, there was a brother involved, you know, instead of a sister or what have you. And so I had this natural drive and because I was the girl, right. I mean, let's face it. I'm, you know, I'm mid fifties. So because I was the girl, my brother didn't have the job of making sure the dinner was on the table, making sure the fridge was clean, making sure the dishes were done, making sure the lunches were done, right. Making sure, because those were women's jobs. And so I had a lot on my plate, right? I had a lot on my plate. And so I think I've learned how to spin plates really well. Apparently, apparently it's in my numerology. I'm a five and they spin plates or whatever. So, um, so I learned that. And um, again, it was a non-negotiable. So I think that um, I'm used to being a giver. What I had to learn was to self, to give to myself an equation to what I gave. That was a big one. And because I, I think I'm such a, like a Deepak Chopra, I believe in potentiality. I really faltered to, um, to try to make people see their own potential. And it was, and I was spending a lot of expending energy, like, you know, loving on people, loving on people, loving on people. And it's great, but the balance of filling myself up, being in the circle of people and being able to be that kind of conduit was a really interesting lesson for me because it was expected of me and the giving was expected, but you know, my mom came home from work and she was tired and I'd have dinner on the table. And it wasn't that she wasn't being the best that she could or what have you. It wasn't that I was raised in an awful family. Us cousins got together, but I was also one of the eldest cousins of many kids. And so when the family got together, my job was to take care of the kids, right? 
right? I was the second eldest woman in or girl in this whole family. And so I took care of, so I am used to that and I had to get used to this and loving on myself and then having people in my life that was reflecting it back to me. That's been a magical journey. I'm just going to say magical because there's other words I can put in there. <laughs> I could take that now and put it in there. But I think it is um, the thing about network marketing is it's very collaborative that you can feed off the success of the energy. And I think the one thing that is making this book so successful and when we had that meeting was that the goal wasn't about us or even each other. It was the industry like that we've worked together to raise the bar to make it easier for men and for women. I mean, Angela's got the blessing. I'm not sure if it's a blessing. She would tell us the secrets of what it's like to do a, this business together and, and have, you know, two people in the business. And I'm sure we'll hear a little bit about that, but um, I think that it's almost like a cause, right? And I think you get to a place in your life where it becomes more of a cause. And so, yeah, um, that's, awesome. that's the truth of it, right? That's awesome. I love it. And honestly, Angela, it was such a, a pleasure to meet you. And I feel like I've gained a lot from having you in the book as well. So what are your, your future projects? Let's, let's go a bit towards that. I think I'm putting you on the spot here because we hadn't planned that. But what are your future products, uh, products, projects? Mm -hmm. So I want to I wanna just, uh, one more thing I want to say about what both of you said. Um, the abundance piece is a huge piece. And Carolyn, mm -hmm. you spoke my words when you had, uh, you know, when you uh, spoke about abundance and um, uh, empowering women through that, through that energy. And I think that um, the book is going to absolutely create so much more in the industry is going to create awareness of what it, what, what it really is, is going to take to make this industry that's already great, even better. Right, it's gonna it's gonna require this type of collaborative approach, and we are growing up in this industry. And with what we've just living in 2020, you know, it's gonna take this kind of group of women, men, people in the industry that are stewards of this industry, right? Not just within their teams or within the companies, but as the industry over overall. So, and I think this book becomes a conduit for that. I love that so much. And I still resonate with what you said, Deborah, because I'm also was raised as a giver and um, I'm still on the journey of learning where to draw the boundaries there. That's, that's, that's always mm -hmm. for me that I'm working on. And uh, that's my, that's one of the future products that I'm working, projects I'm working on for 2021 is creating more of that balance. Um, for myself, uh, because I'm, um, I'm Austrian, I'm German speaking, I'm working on a project right now that's going to help empower women in that market. Um, that's something that's been near and dear to me for a couple of years. And I'm, I start a community and I'm, I'm, I have some ideas around that. And you guys have really kind of shown me the way how you created this community. I want to create that in the German the German speaking market that's that's home still for me um i have a bunch of other book really for industry what it takes to live through the ups and the downs because they are going to come right and i think this is where this industry can sometimes be very seductive because when you come in and you have the work ethic that all of us have and we've worked hard and we have the energy to attract people to us and the vision that we're casting um you know it creates that big momentum piece but what the energy that it took to get that going versus the energy it takes to, to sustain the team and growth and and duplication is a whole other energy right so um i'm doing a lot of uh, considering in that because i feel like there's not much that we is talked about about that energy later on in the business so that's one of the projects i'm considering working on and um there's lots of other things. I, I, I'm in my mid fifties. I did a fitness competition in my late forties. So I'm thinking, is this on the table for me once more before I hit 60? <laughs> those are my, you know, those kinds of goals. And, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, personally, there's a whole bunch of other things going on, but I, I love, this is what I love about this industry. It makes us think outside the box. It makes us not um, have to, especially as women, you know, we can have success here at any age. It's the great equalizer of all people, no matter where you come from, what your education is, your family background, you know, all the things you may have happened to in the past. It's the great equalizer. And at any point in time, you can choose to step into that next level of success by, you know, choosing and growing that mindset to get us there. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. I, I love the 
you know, here's what I love about talking to someone like yourself, Angela, who's got history in this industry. And we're talking about the network marketing industry, right? And how, and, and the side benefits that it teaches us. And as you grow up, in this industry, because it really is an interesting sector. It's very different than going to work for a company, right? And so as you grow up in this industry, it actually opens the doors outside of what we do, right? It does make you continue to think, and it does, it does take age off the table. You know, that age is just a number, like you've said, because um, I think the more you grow up, I think the more you come into your own, actually, the more you do see and all, you know, and you thinking about having a physical, it's funny because I'm thinking of doing a physical goal as well before I hit that number. And I thought about that this year. And um, it, you, it's almost like, it's almost like there's no, there is no boundaries to what you can do because you know tomorrow you could go grocery shopping and you could meet the one person that takes your business to the limit because you've seen it, you've heard it, you've observed it, you might've even experienced it. And I think the one thing that I hear in you is a big advocate of this industry is the unexpected and expected hope that happens. Because there is a sense of magic when you have control. There is a sense of magic when you have control. And then there's a sense of magic when you let go. And I think that that's what this industry is, right? It's like, okay, you know, you, you, you birth these, you help these people, and then they go and more come in and I think it's just a really magical elixir, really. But um, you've done incredibly well taking your experience from network marketing and putting it in the other areas of your life. And um, before we before we sign off, um, how about a comment or two about what it's like to work with your husband? Um, well, my husband's not full time in the business for me. He's really in a yeah. supporting role. So, okay. um, then what I want to say there is, and I think this is important for, for maybe women to hear that are in the business and, you know, their husbands are, uh, may or may not be supporting them. So I happen to have a very supportive husband, one that's always, you know, been the one that's been the wings between, beneath my wings, uh, you know, the, the wind between my wings. He's actually was the one that when I, when I kind of discovered this industry that said, oh, I think you'd be great at this. Just go, right? Like he was the one going, go, 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 go. <laughs> so I know that's not everyone's experience. So I really honor him for this because the reason why we're together after 32 years, this is my second husband. The, re the reason why we're together and, 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 and still in a continuously growing, loving and supporting relationship is because we've both been committed to growth individually ourselves, um, not taking away from each other, you know, experiences, but actually allowing that other person to go. And in this industry, it really becomes, um, it's, it's either you grow together, or you grow apart. And I have to say for us, it has helped us to grow even further together. Our kids have grown up in this conversation. Our kids have been to many of the events and heard, you know, this kind of conversation. Um, you know, they've been here when we've had many in-home events before. Of course, we can't have them right now. So it is such a breeding ground for excellence. And um, if your spouse right now or your partner right now is maybe not as on board as you'd like them to be, you know, give them the time, right? And whatever support you have, whatever that looks like, accept that, don't make them into something that's, that they're not. I, I see that a lot in our team, you know, women kind of see how my husband is with me and where they see other people and they go, well, why, why isn't my husband doing this? And, and that, that you got to give that time and you got to, and, and you got to allow them their experience. Right. So mm -hmm. I, help myself very, you know, um, I don't want to say lucky. It's just what we've created. You know, that's the basis of our relationship is, is it's based on support and growth. So, you know, and, and honestly, to the onus, I would say to women this, uh, once you show him the money, I'm going to tell you or partner, they're going to have a very different attitude towards the business. So get out there, get the work, show them the money. And then I'll, I'll guarantee you that the support will be very different. So that's how I see that whole piece. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. It's a great way to close. Well, you know what, Caroline, I'm going to hand it over to you to close. Um, um, it was such a pleasure, Angela, getting to have even more of an insight. I can't wait. And hopefully we will be able to support in, you know, at least one of your projects. And I know that there's more books and more podcasts and more, more media to do. Absolutely. Glass of wine. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and and that's what I wanna that's what I wanna tell you, Angela. You need to be out there because you are so inspiring and interesting, and we loved having you here and in the book. And I'm I'm 
I feel privileged that I know you. So thank you for all of that. And thank you for all your pieces of wisdom, especially with, you know, well, a lot of things, but especially in the couples. And I love actually, um, you know, when you said, we're just lucky, you said, you said, no, we're not lucky. Actually, we chose it. And, um, and that's such an important message because yes, luck exists at some, to some extent, but life is about choices, you know, and you, you reap the benefits or the rewards or the not so good things of your choices. So you guys chose to, to grow together and support each other. And, and that for you, for this, I raise my hat. Congratulations. It's amazing. And I was thinking, listening to you ladies talk about your physical goals, I was like, well, I guess I need one too. So I think we should just set a marathon, like register to a marathon in Jamaica or something and all meet there together and do it. <laughs> I'm not sure there's a marathon in Jamaica, but whatever. <laughs> I just said that, you know, an exotic place just to go and, mm -hmm. and do all of that together so that could be one of our projects for 2021 <laughs> it could be it could be i i was thinking ireland but that's okay ireland, yeah, ireland, ireland actually makes way more sense and yes it would be and it would be in europe so and then we can go somewhere else. yes then we can pop over then we can okay so then after the marathon then we're going to pop over to germany and launch the book <laughs> <laughs> okay, we better stop talking. People are gonna be like, "What? What? What?" <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you know what? If you have suggestions to send us into the <laughs> we should do, please send it. We will put Angela's information on the podcast. Angela, yes. is there a website or email address that you would like to share if anyone wants to reach you? Yeah, people can reach me, of course, on all social media channels. Angela Martini on Facebook. Uh, Angela A Martini is my website so angela a martini.com reach on reach me over there and i uh, would love to connect with you and uh you know this has been such a good for me this morning ladies thank you 